Gilbert on the right and uh, Scarponi on the left. Sc G Philippe Gilbert always looks like one of those. I can I can see Philippe Gilbert in the 1960s. You know, slightly on cotille, very suave, very sophisticated, but uh, you know, good-looking chap on the bike. Scarponi, I can see in one of those shots from the 1920s, <laughs> looking like he's got tires wrapped around him and, and looking half dead on the bike. <laughs> yeah. Like an old-style bike rider. This is the chasing group with Vincenzo Nibali, who's been on the uh, deck quite heavily. Yeah. Yeah, it did. He was very lucky, actually, with that one. That could have easily been a broken collarbone or a broken wrist or, or one of those sorts of uh, falls. Wasn't too high speed, but the, w the front wheel just went dink and tucked up underneath him. 108. Ten kilometers to go. There's Nievi, Mikhail Nievi. Of uh, Yuskal Telescari, the two case to prime riders are Pablo Lastras and Rigoberto Uran. That is uh, Vincenzo Nibali. Uh, then Jakob Fugelslang of uh, Saxo Bank. And the other riders in the breakaway, if I can remember who they were, just looking at them. Bolka Malema of Rabobank. I can't remember who the last guy was. For a minute, I'll, I'll remember. Oh, Sanchez. Of Yuskal Tel. I'm going to forget that. Under 10 kilometers to go then to the finish and uh, it's the gap is still going out this very surprising they're not really getting it together to work particularly well but they're not going too badly I'm surprised it's uh, got another few seconds out well I'm, I'm not too surprised to be honest with you because every time that they swing off the front there's someone there kind of just letting the gap in again yeah and um, unless all the riders are kind of committing to the chase here now you're not really going to get anywhere um, you know, with the likes of Sanchez sitting on the wheel and uh, Rigoberto Oran sitting on the wheel as well, um, together with Balkin Malema and, and the rest of them, it's, it's just not going to be 100% commitment. Um, and ultimately working two guys against these, these two guys, mm -hmm. um, they're clearly the, the, the stronger two riders in the race and uh, that's why they're out front. Yep, that's a good point to make, isn't it? It's not actually... Uh, it's not actually seven against two, or it's actually two against two, because there is, if, if you're only just pulling off the front, somebody else going ahead, and there's a big gap, then it's just, it, you might as well just have two people chasing rather than seven. Yeah, and obviously these these two guys are going to be very committed. They've got yeah, a good exactly. gap. They're not going to want to let that go until we get into the final couple of kilometres, and they can start playing a bit of cat and mouse. The more uh, the bigger the advantage they have, the more <laughs> tactics they can allow themselves to play with. Um, over the final couple of kilometers, so there will be full commitment from these guys until um, until the very very end. Uh, Mark Fairclough writing in on the Twitter feed, which is spokesmen, uh, saying, "Gosh, the guy from Quick Steps hard. He gave a big grin as they went through the puddle. I think it was more a grimace actually. <laughs> That's Carlos Beredo. Seems to have been able to rein in his natural enthusiasm to attack everybody at any point." Uh, in any race, uh, this is this is not going to happen, is it? Because they're they're all over the shop bit. Yeah. And there's a lot of riders, I think, suffering uh, in this little group, or a number of riders suffering. Let's get Sanchez not looking happy, uh, Barredo not looking happy, and certainly Nibali wasn't looking happy either. These two are ploughing on with eight kilometres to go. It's going to be a two-horse race unless something drastic happens. Okay, cards on the table. These two. Which one? Well, I'm actually going to put my um, my cards on Scott Pony. Yep. Okay. Reasons for? It's just his type of uh, type of weather, type of race, and you know he's he's chased hard and he's worked hard for this one here now. And um, I don't know. It's, it's I've just got that feeling today. He's going to give the uh, the elbow to Gilbert on this climb, or or not? Is that the case? Maybe. I mean, it's still a little bit out, far out from the finish to get rid of Gilbert. It's a little bit far to, to do it, but I think Scarponi needs to have a proper crack at this one. There are a couple of, uh, should we call it, um, interesting corners on the way uh, coming off this little ah, climb true. as well. So, uh, yeah, I think Gilbert has got the commitment in terms of and, and, the, and the speed on the decent on Scarponi. So, is it really anyone's race, to be honest? Mikel Nieve. Here's the man at the front of the chasing group. He's got Samuel Sanchez, the team leader in that group there. The question is how far will these two work together now? They just have to keep going, to be honest. Yeah. Can't start messing about here. And both of them are experienced enough not to do that. Interesting that the 
difference in shape to these two guys. Scarponi, uh, taller, not, not as broad in the shoulder. And uh, Philippe Gilbert, much more of a stocky rider, although he's not a, a, a great big powerhouse of a rider, not, not, not like a, a Tor Hushoft, but he's somewhere in between the two. Yeah, I mean, I think Scarponi is more of, a, of an outright climber than what, what Gilbert is. Obviously, Gilbert can still climb very, very well, but Scarponi, I think, is more of a, of a mountain goer than, uh, than what Gilbert would be. Yep, he's not a bad sprinter, actually, Scarponi, nope, either. No, definitely not. Yep. Riding side by side now, as opposed to taking it on. Oh, Scarponi just wants to, wants to ease the pace up a little bit. Possibly see. Oh, and Jakob Fulslang has decided. Well, he was pretty, pretty active early on. He's a very good climber, Fulslang. And he's decided. Well, you know, nobody's going to take this on. I'm going to have to have to go for this. He clearly feels he's got the legs. And Vincenzo Nibali is uh, going to go with him, as is Samuel Sanchez behind him. Yeah, good move by Fulslang. Yeah, absolutely. Can he make a stick though? I'm not sure that he's. But that he isn't going to make it stick. I was going to say. I think he, it looks as though some of the other guys behind are beginning to suffer. How much of this here, Magnus, when you're riding side by side on a climb like this is testing each other out? And how much of it is the sort of camaraderie of this is a rubbish day, we've got to do this together? At this point, it's more a question of trying to cycle your, your opponent out and then just give yeah. show them that, look, I'm quite, quite enjoying this, actually. So, <laughs> you know, if you want to have a go, you know, if you want the shot, <laughs> if you want a shot at the title, have you... Give you your best go, you know. Yeah, it's great to watch, though, isn't it? It's it is. that. It's that. Well, you, you are clearly been in this sort of situation yourself. That we just, uh, you know, you're sitting next to somebody, and you, yeah, come on, if you think hard enough. And it just the pace sometimes just eases up a little bit. As Scarponi did just now, and uh, Gilles Bell just match it, pedal stroke, pedal stroke, and there won't be any uh, any drama. But you, when you're in that close proximity, you can feel the other rider panting, breathing heavily. You can hear the gears, you could hear the jockey wheels going around, you can hear the chain, every click on the gears is absolutely paramount. If you see, hear your opponent changing gear for any reason at all, uh, then you're wondering what is it, what's going on, what's, is he preparing for an attack or is he suffering, it's uh, all sorts of things going on. Well, they are side by side then, Scarponi on the right, with the casket, it's the hat. Peak turned down, Philippe Gilbert riding in my preferred style with peak up. <laughs> I prefer not going with a, with a hat at all. Really? I can't, you know, I can't wear a helmet without something underneath it. Really? I feel really weird. <laughs> Isn't that what's not odd? That just feel really odd. But I don't have a casket underneath it. Except when it's like, boiling hot and I can't do anything about it. Even then, <clears throat> when is the time better to stop and take the casket off because I'm <laughs> boiling. <laughs> yeah, it's a big old gap. And I think it's coming down to these two, uh, although Full Slang is trying his hardest to get away. Uh, he's dragged another two or three riders with him. So the chasing group whittled down from seven to about four now. 106, so they're making no impression at all, really. Not really, no. I'm surprised to see that none of them have really tried to have a bit of a go here. I would have expected Scarponi to really at least try. Aha, mm -hmm. shades of Onkatil and uh, Pulidor there. Just a little close, just leading on each other. These are the chasing riders. Full Slang has taken the initiative. He's got Samuel Sanchez with him, Vincenzo Nibeli, and I think it was Pablo Lastras was the other yeah. rider. One minute, six seconds is the gap. Hey, Lastras is doing an impressive ride. Yeah, very good. Well, when, he's on, when he has a good day, he has a real good day. Yeah. We don't see much of him. Full Slang is really going well. Talking of good days. Sanchez and Lastras. Sanchez especially just, I don't know, just beginning to feel the pace of Full Slang there. It's bird song, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Full Slang. Yeah. Didn't know you speak Danish. Spoke Danish. Ah, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak Danish. In fact, a Dane told me you have to stop pronouncing the G. Full Slang, almost. There he is on the right hand side of the screen. One minute. They've cut the gap down a little bit then. Vincenzo Nibali's second in this uh, line here. It's in not, the line green. Not quite getting rid of uh, Sanchez and Lastra, no. so he's Almost, borderline but quite. breaking them, but. God, not that's quite. horrible. 
Looks like a typical day in Ludlow. Nasty, nasty weather. Look at the rooster tail that's just being sprayed off the back of Philippe Gilbert's bike. And Scarponi, this is a this is a real classic old style nasty weather bike race. These two guys are riding shoulder to shoulder, and it's a case of right, okay, we're we'll just stay here and see how the other one's going. What sort of tricks can you play on your opponent at this point? Well, the tricks that you play, obviously, it's um, is kind of making sure that you look as cool and calm as you possibly can right next to to the guy, and if you can put sort of half wheel him a little bit uh, and still look as calm as uh, what Phil Philip Gilberry is doing right now then um, it's going to play a little bit of tricks with uh, with someone like Scott Pony. although like we said earlier Scott Pony is a very very hard man and um, I think if you're feeling very good in a, in a race like today with these conditions and you get into this point it's almost you almost get stronger by it because it's just 